Since man first looked to the sky thousands of years ago, he has wondered, are we alone in the universe? Carl Sagan said there were billions and billions of stars, so it would be crazy for us to think that with all the planets and stars out there, we were the only form of intelligent life in the entire universe. NASA has confirmed the existence of more than 450 planets outside our solar system. The biggest obstacle to contacting life on these planets? How do we get there? So for example, uh, the star system Alpha Centauri is four and a half light years away. We were able to use conventional rockets uh, that could travel at say 5% of the speed of light. It would still take thousands of years to get there. Experts think there might be another way, a secret method to unlocking instantaneous travel to any point in the universe. And it might have existed for centuries. Join us as we unseal the conspiracy behind Stargate. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed, Conspiracy Files. Baghdad, 2003. American and British troops invade Iraq. The night sky turns to day as hundreds of bombs find their targets. Tanks roll down city streets. In a few short weeks, the Iraqi military is crushed. The mission is said to be accomplished, yet American troops remain there for more than a decade. Some experts have a shocking theory why U.S. soldiers remained for so long. Iraq has long been known as the location of one of the oldest stargates on planet Earth. The history of the Iraqi stargate goes back more than 6,000 years. For a civilization that was essentially coming right out of the Stone Ages, they were very highly advanced. Chariots, tools, irrigation, weapons. In just a few hundred years, Sumerians advanced the species more than the previous 200,000 years combined. The Sumerian culture is supposedly responsible for giving us a lunar calendar, arithmetic, even some of the first bits of literature written on stone tablets. How did the ancient Sumerians create such wonders? One of the theses that was put forward was that the ancient Sumerians were in fact an, a civilization that had been assisted by a race of extraterrestrials called the Anunnaki, and that the Anunnaki provided them with advanced technology. Anunnaki is roughly translated as those who fell from the heavens. So how did the Anunnaki cross the vast interstellar distance between their home world and Earth? One theory, Stargates. One of these technologies was the ability to be able to travel through space-time using these technologies called stargates. The theory behind how a stargate works is that it's a wormhole or vortex that connects two points in space together, kind of like folding a piece of paper over. And some people think they're everywhere. Probably anywhere between 10 to 20 for around the world altogether. In southern Peru, a mysterious civilization that predates the Incas built the Puerta de Ayumarca, or Gateway of the Gods. There's a stargate near the city of Puno, uh, Peru, which is on the edge of Lake Titicaca. It basically is built into what appears to be a, a cliff face, and it looks like a very large a doorway. There is a legend that one of the priests of the Incas was being chased by the Spanish conquistadors and he fled into a stargate, into a portal, and simply disappeared from this plane of reality. In neighboring Bolivia, 
Another ancient people built the gateway to the sun more than 2,000 years before the rise of the Incan Empire. The gateway of the sun stargate in Bolivia was built by the Tiwanaku civilization. It's located on the shores or nearby Lake Titicaca on the top of the, of the Bolivian plateau there. This doorway to the sun was a means by which the Tiwanakan civilization believed that they could interact or enter into the energies of the sun. Pictographs and sculptures throughout the pyramids of Egypt depict the coming of gods from the stars who arrived and left long ago. What they left behind was a legacy of advanced technology, architecture, and culture the likes of which had never been seen before. What evidence is there that advanced technology was delivered to the Egyptians through technologies such as stargates? Well, the evidence we have is evidence from the hieroglyphics themselves that seem to indicate that there were places on planet Earth where they call them gods, could easily transport themselves between their plane of reality, whatever universe they lived in, and our plane of reality. Would these advanced beings send ambassadors of peace? Or would they transport advanced weapons that would make our largest nuclear missiles seem like firecrackers by comparison? Imagine what the human race could do with such an incredible technology as a Stargate. Worse, imagine what we would do with it. A Stargate in the wrong hands could spell disaster for all mankind. And some believe the most evil force on Earth may have already found one. Coming up, did the Nazis really find a working Stargate? Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. It's theorized that stargates are portals which allow interplanetary travel over unimaginable distances. And many think Adolf Hitler may have located just such a gateway. Hitler became obsessed with the theory of the lost land of Thule. The land of Thule was an underground or a subterranean civilization inhabited by these Nordic looking giants who had tremendous abilities. And uh, very importantly, they also had very sophisticated, very advanced technologies. It was first described by the ancient Greeks who equated it with the lost civilization of Atlantis. One of the myths about an ancient Aryan civilization was that this civilization inhabited a warm region beneath the surface of Antarctica. In 1938, before World War II is in full swing, Hitler sends German ships to Antarctica under the pretense of establishing a whaling base. Many historians believe he has far different motives. If Hitler was really interested in whaling, then why send U-boats and other war machines down to Antarctica? It doesn't make any sense, unless he was going there for another reason. Nazi Germany was convinced that Atlantis was actually uh, buried underneath the Antarctic ice. The philosophical Nazis were looking for some kind of validation for the supremacy of what they call the Aryan race, specifically for that portal that brought the Aryans to planet Earth. They were looking for a stargate. In 1939, the Nazi expeditions pay off. They establish an Antarctic base they name New Swabia. As World War II rages on, the Nazis allegedly continue to make frequent trips to the base. With the Soviets closing in on the Eastern Front and the Allies closing in from the West, you would think the German Wehrmacht would be totally occupied with defending the Fatherland instead of sending these naval expeditions to Antarctica. After the Germans are defeated in 1945, Reports of the Nazi base in Antarctica continue. One year after the surrender, the United States launches its own expedition to this frozen land. Unsealed case file, Operation High Jump. 
Operation Hijam, 1946 to 1947, was a large naval expedition under the command of Admiral Byrd that went to Antarctica, ostensibly to visit the mini colony of New Swabia. The cover story was that they were simply mapping it. What the Americans allegedly found there defied description. Reports of advanced rocket technology, anti-gravity experiments, and even high-tech flying saucers are unconfirmed. Some people believe that there was evidence of genetic experiments in an entire decade before DNA was even discovered. What we do know, Operation High Jump was abruptly canceled months before its scheduled completion date. Admiral Richard Byrd expressed his fear of fast objects flying from pole to pole at incredible speeds. Whatever it is that the American government found in Antarctica, we'll never know. During World War II, physicist Werner von Braun is one of the most prominent scientists of the Nazi party. He develops the V-2 rocket, a ballistic missile that causes brutal destruction in the final years of the war. In less than four years, the Nazis go from firing artillery shells to having radio-guided rockets. Where did the Nazis get such technology at a time when wars were fought without guidance systems, smart bombs, or satellites? A lot of people theorize that this was accomplished using alien technology that may have been brought through the Stargate. There were huge advancements in technology in World War II but none of it even compared to what Operation High Jump was reported to find in New Swabia. After the war, von Braun's technical wizardry was used to create America's first ballistic missile, its first jet fighter, and was responsible for the launch of America's space program. As frightening as the potential technology of New Swabia might have been, even more frightening is the alleged discovery of an ancient stargate in Iraq. When we return, the desperate rush to secure the Iraqi Stargate will be revealed. Saddam Hussein with Stargate technology in his hands? There's no way our government would have sat around and let that happen. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed. Conspiracy Files. Current theory on the Iraqi Stargate places the device beneath the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, the first great city of the world. It is also the site of the Sumerians' grandest temple, called the Great Ziggurat. In 1922, the British explorer Woolley was sent to Iraq to explore the ancient city of Ur for artifacts. But legend has it that what Woolley found was not just an ancient city, but an entire ancient complex, possibly housing a stargate. Just as Willie is not the first to explore the temple in modern times, he is also not the last. In the early 1980s, Saddam Hussein orders a massive restoration project at the Great Ziggurat, effectively transforming the temple into a fortress. The Ziggurat of Ur, is purportedly where Saddam worked on his biochemical weapons. It became the center of his operations, and he even put an air force base there. Experts say three massive staircases leading into the temple were restored by Saddam, and not just to allow for easier access, they were also built to carry things out. Things like the Iraqi Stargate. So no reason the United States launched a preemptive strike against Iraq in 2003 was because Saddam Hussein had gotten into his hands some of these uh, technologies, such as stargates. That's when the US political elite became very worried that Saddam Hussein would go public about his discoveries. Critics of the war in Iraq speculate the real reason for America's involvement is to secure Iraq's oil supply for future use. But all the oil in the world pales in comparison to unlimited access to advanced alien technology. Whether you loved or hated Bush, we may have all been wrong about the reasons for going to war. Another piece of startling evidence, one of the most elite naval units in military history, known as Task Force 20, is dispatched in 2003 with the mission to find and terminate high-profile enemy targets in Iraq. 
they were approximately 1,500 of the military's finest special forces people, and their job in Iraq after the invasion in 2003 was essentially to find Saddam Hussein according to the public record. But the unit's priorities raise questions. Early on in the invasion, Task Force 20 engages in a vicious firefight with Iraqi soldiers, not at a military target, but at the National Museum of Iraq. Why would the U.S. government spend so many resources trying to get to the National Museum of Iraq? And why was the Iraqi Republican Guard there defending it? Task Force 20, um, it had multiple missions, but its more secret mission was really to scour all of Iraq's ancient sites, all of Iraq's museums, for any information. They were looking for evidence to support that the Stargate was at the Great Ziggurat of Ur. American forces made the Great Ziggurat the site of one of their most important air bases for the next nine years. We stayed in Iraq for 10 years, long after Saddam Hussein was overthrown, ostensibly to help the Iraqis build a new government. But could it have been that it took us an entire decade to dismantle the Stargate and ship it back to the United States because of that technology? And that was the reason we stayed in Iraq until 2012. If they did dismantle the Iraqi Stargate and took it back to the US, it could be in any number of secret government warehouses, Area 51, Wright-Patterson, even Fort Knox. The thing could be anywhere. Theorists see evidence of stargates in every technological explosion in human history. Ancient texts and hieroglyphs seem to verify their suspicions. From the Wright brothers' first powered flight and NASA's landing on the moon, less than 70 years, and now NASA has a rover crawling across the surface of Mars looking for life. Believers in stargates argue such a great leap in science and technology over such a short amount of time simply cannot be explained by traditional thinking. The advantages of a military or a civilization that controlled a stargate would be enormous. They would be able to transport people and equipment through vast distances of time and space. Coming up, the dangers of a Stargate, once found, are almost too great to conceive. If an enemy had a Stargate and was able to utilize it in a war against us, we could be snuffed out of existence in less than a second. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Experts worry the opening of a Stargate could have terrifying consequences for a civilization as relatively primitive as our own. If Stargates were built by a race of extraterrestrials to enable them to traverse vast distances, what chance do we have of manipulating that technology? We'd be like infants playing with a nuclear bomb. The main concern is that no matter who attempts to open the Stargate, the end result could spell disaster for all mankind. That would be very, very dangerous for a Stargate to be opened prematurely like that without knowing who would be coming through. An out-of-control wormhole might pull the Earth through a Stargate, piece by painful piece. What if we created a black hole right here on planet Earth and we snuffed ourselves out of existence without even realizing what we were about to do? It would be as if we never existed. Unsealed Conspiracy Files.